Merriam's Online Academy. Today we will be doing Wiggling Toes, and this is from page 22 of the Dozen a Day Preparatory Book. If you don't have a copy of this already, feel free to purchase it by following the link in the description below. In Wiggling Toes, we're going to be learning how to do the very beginning of a chromatic scale. Chromatic scales are one of those things in piano that you will come across over many, many years. So it's important to get the technique solid right from the start. So in this exercise, first we do the chromatic scale with the right foot or the right hand, the left foot or the left hand, and then both hands together. So let's start with the right hand first. So first put your hand at your side and make sure that when you bring your hand up, you have a nice naturally curved position. I wanna point out one thing actually before we start playing, and that is in this exercise, we have a C and then a C sharp and then a D and then a D flat. C sharp and D flat are the same note on the piano. So we're gonna go up to C sharp and then play D and then to D flat, which was the same note. So we're gonna go up and back and we're only gonna use these three notes on the piano. In the left hand, it's the same thing. So C sharp, D and then D flat. So let's do our playing rid of that for a second. All right, so with our nice naturally curved hand position, we're gonna start with a nice tall thumb. So make sure your thumb is on a little bit of an angle so that your wrist is not too low. As well, you're gonna be going to a black key second. So you wanna make sure that you're high enough that you can play the black key with a curved finger and not flat. Sometimes when you play with your thumb down like this and then you go to play the black key, your finger is very, very flat. It doesn't create the best tone on the key. So instead, keep your thumb tall and your wrist a little bit higher so that when you play that key, you can play it nice and curved. I'm just going to point out one little thing with the fingering as well. So right here, we're going to use finger three on the black key. So we're going to alternate between one and three, and then your thumb again, and then back to three. So here's how that technique would look for the right hand. So you have C, C sharp. Notice a couple of things as I'm playing this. I don't lift my thumb way up in the air like this, and I don't take my third finger off the black key. Instead, I keep all the fingers very, very close and just move my thumb slightly over and slightly back, keeping my third finger in contact with the key the whole time. It creates a very small movement, which eventually will help you to play quite fast. In the left hand, very similar, we're going to start with the thumb on the C, moving to three, and then back to thumb, and then back to three again. So here's the C. So here again, that nice angle on the thumb, keeping it up a little bit higher so that our wrist is in this position here and not collapse like that. Third finger. So you can see here, my thumb just moves slightly back and forth instead of lifting way up in the air like this. You want to avoid that movement. Eventually, again, once you play fast, it's going to be very, very slow and a little bit too clunky. Here's how it looks if we do both hands together. Notice my wrist moves slightly in behind my thumb and it doesn't stay locked so that my hand feels very comfortable and relaxed. So let's add a little bit of dy dynamics to this and I'll play the whole exercise for you a little bit faster. I like to do a crescendo and then a diminuendo. So I'm gonna do the same thing in each line, crescendo, diminuendo. So let's do the right hand first. play a chromatic passage. Be sure to transfer that knowledge into your chromatic scales or any chromatic passage work that you might have in your pieces. And before doing those, feel free to use this exercise as a warm-up. 
You could also play around a little bit more with the dynamics, maybe do a full crescendo or diminuendo, some forte, some piano. There's a lot you could do with this exercise to get really, really comfortable with that technique. Be sure to check out more of the videos in the Dozen a Day Technique Series. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Miriam's Online Academy. Check back here for more videos and don't forget to subscribe below.